Pets have been a part of human life for centuries. Cats were among some of the first domesticated animals, originating from the Far East around 7500 BC, later becoming worshipped beings in ancient Egypt in 3100 BC. It's only natural that as we share more of our lives online, our pets would become part of that content. But when pets become props for entertainment or bad care advice is spread, genuine concern can be expressed for our animal friends. In this video, I intend to go through YouTube and pets, going through several different controversies surrounding animals and illustrating exactly how YouTube itself can be harmful towards animals when it comes to using them for entertainment or part of content. Let's begin with hamsters. Hamsters are a common pet, mistakenly advertised as ideal for children. In reality, hamsters are far more high maintenance than one would imagine, having many requirements from needing more space than most store-bought cages provide to being housed alone as solitary animals. Hamsterious is a channel based on creating challenges such as mazes for their pet hamsters. They received backlash after releasing a Squid Game version, replicating life and death games seen in the hit Netflix show. Here's a few things about hamsters that you should know before we continue. On average, hamsters can only fall around 10 inches from the air without being injured. Any more than that, and it's likely many different injuries can be caused to the hamster, including breaking bones. And number two, hamsters are strongly affected by stress, which can be caused from rough handling, loud noises, being held from or dropping to a height, or unfamiliar environments. And let me make that completely clear, just being held from a height without dropping can cause a hamster stress. Stress can lead to illnesses such as diarrhea, accelerated aging, a weakened immune system making them more susceptible to illnesses, heart disease and heart attacks. As well as this, hamsters are solitary animals and most hamsters cannot be housed with other hamsters. The hamsters in the Squid Game video are placed through miniature versions of the Squid Game trials. Every single different one of these challenges included the stressor of unfamiliar environment. But each of these different trials also had different things that can stress our hamsters. The first game was a maze, which has the problem of the stress of the turning mechanics, and it's an unsafe area for hamsters. They had to make their way around pointed sticks, and while the points may be blunt, it can still prod into the hamster and interfere with certain organs if they fall on it or walk on it in a certain way. These are very sensitive, tiny animals. It's kind of like if someone came over to you and bludgeoned you with a pole. Or not even bludgeoned, just whacked you with a pole. While it might not interfere with your internal organs as they're protected by the rib cage, it's bound to cause at least some discomfort. Games number two, the honeycomb game, and game number six, the squid game, had the hamsters being together, which again is another stressor for them. Hamsters are solitary animals, and then being together can lead to aggressive behaviour with fights breaking out and them injuring each other. With the honeycomb game as well, I'm not exactly sure what these honeycombs were made of. I hope it wasn't actual honeycomb because hamsters plus sugar, a lot of sugar, don't, don't do that to your hamsters. Hamsters do not eat cookies. Game number four, tug of war, and game number five, stepping stones, have the obvious stressor of height and some of them fell from that height. We already know what stresses could do to hamsters. They can literally have heart attacks from that. After all of the backlash, Hamsterius released a video showing all of the hamsters in their homes, showing that they were all safe. But this update video didn't ease concerns either because the hamsters were all housed together, which is something that hamsters should not be doing. They should not be living together. There appeared to be no burrowing space for the hamsters and hamsters are burrowing animals and they need to have bedding that will allow them to burrow. And they also appeared to have unsuitable bedding. It looked like they had wood shavings. Using wood shavings in rodent cages can lead to respiratory issues. I feel so bad for the hamsters when I watch the video and when I watch the update video. I still felt bad for the hamsters. Please do not house hamsters together. Make sure that they have a decent burrowing space and don't use wood shavings. You don't want them to get an infection. Like, why? 
If you would like more details on how exactly these kind of maze challenges and games can be harmful towards hamsters, I highly recommend that you go over to Soda Pet's channel. They have also covered this controversy and they also do a lot of different other videos going into adequate care and housing for animals. Let's move on to dogs, shall we? Now, dogs are definitely one of the more common types of animals. I mean, some people have had hamsters in their youth, but wouldn't necessarily get one as they're an adult. Cats and dogs tend to be seen as more common animals in an adult home. Alas, that means that even dumb people will have these animals. Dumb people who are either negligent or completely unaware of how to train or look after their animals. And they don't have the excuse of being kids anymore. Oh no. Let's look back on the controversy that Nikki and Dan Philippi found themselves in. They decided to put down their pet dog Bowser after he bit their one-year-old. This was a dog that they'd had for years, and they just decided to put a perfectly healthy dog down for no reason. I understand that it's definitely a safety issue when it comes to children, but perhaps you should be keeping an eye on your child around animals to ensure that they're safe in the first place. In this situation, it is neither the child's fault nor the dog's fault. According to them, their child tried to take away Bowser's food while he was eating, which led to a bite. So first of all, surely you should be supervising your child even more closely. Dogs are animals and are driven by primal urges, and one of those urges is to eat to survive, and therefore if someone comes along and tries to mess with their food, of course they're going to give an aggressive reaction. It's what they do. Make sure that your child isn't around a dog while it's trying to eat, and also if they're just playing with the dog, make sure that you are keeping at least a safe distance because it's a one-year-old, and one-year-olds tend to like to grab things and hold things because they're one. One-year-olds aren't necessarily going to follow directions if you tell them to be gentle with an animal, and therefore you should wait until they're older and can follow directions in order to pet an animal correctly. It's also unclear how familiar Bowser was with children before the arrival of their own. Perhaps it might have been useful to get Bowser used to the idea of a child being around, and this is all to do with training. Bowser should have been trained for this moment. So they failed in two different departments, first parenting and second training their dog. But really a lot of people also had the problem with the fact that before they went to put the dog down, they had a photo shoot with him on Instagram. They took photos hugging and crying and then posted them. It seemed extremely exploitative what you're gonna put your dog down, but first, Let's take pictures. That's like visiting a gravely ill loved one in the hospital who happens to be in a coma and taking selfies with them before switching off the life support. That's twisted. There's also this trend that's been going around the internet, mostly on TikTok, of antagonizing or agitating very small dogs for the angry small dog trend. This became popularized by Pudgy Woke who put earphones near the dog and the dog clearly didn't like the earphones and would become very agitated when they're around. Pudgy Woke definitely popularized this trend with many different accounts replicating these videos. There was an account named Simp for Pudgy who has since changed their name to Madchi, possibly meaning Mad Chihuahua, wherein the owner of the account encroaches on the personal space of her chihuahua, Maddie, who, according to her, has sundowner's syndrome. Sundowner's syndrome is when, during the evening and night hours, a person may become more depressed, confused or irritable than usual. It can be seen in dementia patients and also other animals, such as dogs. At what point in the day do you think that this person films videos of them encroaching on Maddie's space? The evening hours and the night hours, when the dog is known to become more irritable and of course is going to be more angry. The owner claims that she's trying to get Maddie to accept affection with pets and cuddles. Two problems, again the dog has sundowner's syndrome as admitted by the owner and number two, 
The period in which dogs learn to socialize and establish patterns of socialization is between three to seventeen weeks of age. Maddie is an old dog with many health conditions. She's well past that period of establishing being able to accept affection in that way at night. She has already got Sundowner's syndrome. She's gone through the process of socialization. It's not going to happen. And I think the owner knows this because they have a camera set up, ready to film the reaction of Maddie. The effects of stress on dogs can include increased blood pressure and increased heart rate, which can lead to heart disease and suppressed digestion, leading to digestive issues. Maddie already has existing medical conditions. Why are you trying to make it worse? Sonia say, yep, that vegan that decided to feed their fennec fox Jumanji a vegan diet. In the wild, fennec foxes eat insects, small rodents, lizards, birds and eggs, as well as roots, fruits and leaves. They are omnivores. They are not herbivores. What I really don't understand is when people who happen to not eat meat and decide to be vegetarian or vegan also implement that lifestyle upon their pets when they shouldn't be. Dogs can be vegan technically given the right supplements. Cats can never be vegan. They are strictly carnivorous. But whether a cat or a dog can and can't be vegan, that's bizarre to me. Why not just get animals that are already herbivores rather than changing the diet of a carnivore or an omnivore? Here are a list of pets that you can get that happen to be herbivores. Rabbits, hamsters, gerbils, mice, rats, chickens, parakeets, parrots, finches, green iguanas, guppies, mollies, other herbivore fish, chinchillas, tortoises, chuckwallas. There are plenty of animals that already have the diet that you want to give to your dog or cat. Just get one of those. Don't get a dog or a cat. Get a herbivore. It's so much simpler. Yeah, that's right, catch em or fishing, you heard me. Koi fish are not herbivores. Those beta fish that you put in the pond with koi fish, they're going to be eaten. Like, do your research. Koi fish can be extremely aggressive to smaller species of fish when placed with them. Don't put beta fish in a koi fish pond. There were other criticisms of Sonia Say. For example, the state of her fennec fox's nose. It appeared to be extremely red, likely from the fennec fox trying to burrow into a carpet because fennec foxes are burrowing creatures and they need to burrow and so they're gonna try and burrow through your floors because they're fennec foxes. Oh, I could rant about this section all day but let's just move on to axolotls. Axolotls have gotten a lot of attention in the last few years. I've seen a lot more videos of axolotls particularly on TikTok and I guess we can really just talk about catch em all fishing right now because one of the major complaints that I have about a lot of these videos is Why are the axolotls out of water? In one video he takes one of his axolotls out and puts it on a piece of parchment for a prolonged period of time but doesn't put it back until he's covered it in stress coat. Stress coat is not safe for axolotls. Do not put stress coat on axolotls. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Circling back to that koi pond, I've just noticed something. I don't think that that koi pond is suitable for koi. It doesn't look deep enough or big enough for koi, which can get quite big. Domesticated koi can reach up to 15 inches long and jumbo koi can reach up to 36 inches long. How are you fitting the koi in that? No, do not get in there with the koi. First of all, they're going to be scared because you are a massive being coming into their space. They're going to think you're a predator and it's going to stress them out. And number two, there is not nearly enough space in there for the koi to swim around freely without you interfering with their space. She got in there. Surely not. Surely he's not going to try and fish koi out just to put it in another environment. Again, stress can impact koi. It can suppress their immunity and make them susceptible to illnesses, especially if you're using a hook form of fishing because the stress will suppress the healing of that wound. Oh god, he did it.
You see the big orange red koi? I believe it's a kawari mona koi. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's not enjoying this. It's trying to get away from you. If you want to go and fish, go and fish in specific cordoned off areas meant for fishing. Don't do it in your koi pond. I really can't take any more of this stupidity and negligence, so I'm going to leave this video here. I might make a part two. I do want to talk about fake rescue videos when it comes to animals, so let me know down below if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about in regards to PetTube, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.